Good morning. Uh, good morning. No. Good afternoon, <laughs> <laughs> everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to to listen to me. I try not to be very boring. Uh, I know it's the last talk, and it's been like a long day for probably most of you. So yeah, hope it's interesting. Uh, here, as uh, I was presented, I'm gonna be talking about yeah, what is the modern data stack? What is data ops? What is important to have it in a startup or in a tech company? And with the example of how we use it in, in SoloLearn, uh, where it's, I'm, I'm data ops team lead there, uh, to scale and optimize how we use data in, in, in the company. Um, the agenda for the talk is, well, first I'm gonna present a bit what's SoloLearn, vision, mission, and why it's so important that we keep data to accomplish, and that how do we use data in the company to accomplish this vision and mission, uh, and to give a bit of the context on the, on the talk. Then I, I'm gonna uh, present like what is the technology and infrastructure part of, of data ops. Then more about the modern data stack, the tooling, and finally about some explanations about how should we um, organize all of the process around people to make all of the data ops and data science collaboration uh, successful. Uh, the vision of the company where I'm coming with SolarLearn is to give better career choices for all to make programming languages accessible to, to the people. So we are a startup in the ed tech world. Uh, the mission is make learning simple. And the strategy for this is that everyone is served their daily dose of learning customized of their goals, preference, and potential. And of course, like for doing these things like customized, personalized, knowing what are the goals, preference of our customers, Data, it's, it's key, it's at the core of, of our value. And that, that is why it needs to be treated as a, the mo probably one of the most important assets that we have in the, in the company. Normally when we talk about data, and as I can see in most of the conference that we had uh, today and yesterday, we talk about data science, machine learning, like all of the cool stuff that you can do with modeling. Um, but behind all of that, you need to have a really uh, complete like data data infrastructure and really strong processes to make that possible. And that is where the data ops concept uh, is introduced. No? So what data ops does and, and why? Essentially, in data ops, what we do is take care of, of the data platform, which is all of the tools, uh, technology, and process uh, to take the highest value out of the data. And why it's important, as I said, like data, especially in SolarLearn, it's at the core of, 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 of our value. And it what makes it, it what it will make us different from our competitors, and it will, will also help us accomplish that mission and, and vision. And why why it's important also to do it as soon as possible, like in the whole process of scaling in the company. Uh, it is because if you don't do it at the very beginning or at the middle stage, then you start like, getting a, a lot of problems that we will, we're going to see after. And that um, makes like that the data people in the company, especially like data science, data analytics teams, are focusing or knowing where is the data rather than using the data for, for getting uh, useful insights for, for the business. Um, there are two things that we're going to talk about here, about like data ops. It's, uh, technology and, and execution or the technology and infrastructure, which is like essentially uh, treating data as a product. So as, as uh, we are normally uh, used to hear about like how do we should do product management, no? like how do we should interact product uh, managers with engineers, but data should be treated essentially as like kind of the same way. No? We need to build a uh, with discipline and rigor around how data is transformed, governed, sorry, um, documented, so that there is a real portfolio of gold products in the company. This is, means data models, tables, dashboards that are trusted and acknowledged as single source of truth in, in the company. Um, and also we will talk about the, the people and processes to make that happen. Uh, as with, when there is growth in a technology company, there is also like, a need to uh, generate ad hoc and repeatable analytics to assess and execute a strategy and product. Like normally, like analysts will be embedded in the different product teams, and there should be a 
strong processes to know how to interact with this data ops team to, to make that happen. Um, oops. I don't know what I did. Uh. Okay, so technology and, and, and infrastructure. Um, normally, like in, 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 in a startup, and this I, I've seen it in, in like all of, uh, like all of the co companies where I've worked uh, for, it's like we start with a, a small data team that when this company scales, they just do almost like everything, no? And mostly like the first hires of a, a startup are data analyst or data scientist. And at the be very beginning, there is not a lot of data, so infrastructure is not a problem. But then th things start to scale, and they are like all over the place and, and doing all all over of kind of processes that maybe is not what a an, an data analyst or a data scientist should be doing in their in their day to day. So these are like three of the most common problems that I've seen and what data ops tries tries to token, tackle. Um, first, like reports sprawl, like there is not like when there's not like a single source of truth for for the reporting. There is like a lot of uh, analyst building point solutions, but there is not like a broad portfolio of trusted, tested, certified source of truth for decision making. Analysis overdue, uh, this means that there is like an over effort of the data analyst team, anal analytics team, as they are not just focusing on uh, giving insights, but they are also like spending most of their time querying to get KPIs, uh, not doing root cause analysis. So uh, like the data scientists in the end, they don't have like a clear platform where process data, build models or deploy predictions and a team that it is managing those, those kind of process. And lack of governance as it's difficult to have a single point of contact that is responsible for owning the data models and the, the data governance of the, of the company. So knowledge is totally spread around the data analytics, data science team and there's not like a, where one team or one responsible like when you want to know where is the where are the data and what the data means that you can go and, and ask those questions and, and in the end this leads to uh, unsuccessful integrations and and, and and then the data assets sometimes leads to to confusion uh, again I, I don't know why I'm breaking that this all the time this one okay. So now we, we've talked about kind of the, the problems, but uh, it's also important to, to talk about the, the solutions too. So, okay, if we see those problems and this problem sounds familiar to you in, in the places where you work, like how, how, we, how should we solve them and what data ops can do for, for it. So how we enhance data informed decision quality and decision speed, that, that is the main mission of, of the data ops team. Uh, first of all, like not to have fear to to rebuild things like if if the data infrastructure is not uh, it has led to technical debt and is not able to quickly scale the data pro the data products with the business demand then there's my recommendation it's like not to have fear for build things from from ground up and not trying to use the existing systems and the legacy systems and and, and rebuild them um, again it's like uh, to to put a, a data of practice uh, in, in the company, um, especially like if the data science team, as we saw, it's is, is being mirrored down with ops activity, like building the data models, squaring against the databases that are um, not suitable for, 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 for scaling and going fast. Uh, so I would recommend to build a specific team within the company that has this um, a mission of, of just taking care of the data and also take a lot of care of on, on, on the governance part, not only like building data models, but also building the, the documentation and, and the centralized place where people can consult and, 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 and understand what is going on with the data inside the company. So in kind of like the solution statement unpacked is and relating the solutions with the with the problems that I was talking before. For the reports pro problem, uh, data ops to own the data models asset creation and the backend of self search analytics. Um, for the analysis overview is reducing the data science overhead 
uh, to improve the decision quality speed and uh, building gold data models. Like when I say about gold is that are models that are tested every day and you know that those are like the single source of truth uh, for, for, for all of like the business stakeholders of the company. And for the lack of governance, it's important to implement version control and code re reviews for all of the, like, the SQL model and transformations that are happening in between, like from once you get the data until you show it in a dashboard or, or in, a, in an analysis. Um, in kind of like a conceptual approach, like and how this like relates with the different teams and, and the, the goals, like and how you should build things from, from scratch is, is like a top to bottom approach. Uh, first, you have like the strategic needs of the company. What are like the different goals? Like increase the number of customers, number of orders. It depends on, on the objective of, of each. Then you have those goals that are um, related to each of like the teams of, of, of the company. Uh, and each of those teams uh, will be like looking at their main reports, analysis, dashboards that reflects the KPIs and metrics that are linked to the uh, goals above, right? And behind those dashboards reports, you have the different uh, data, data models that uh, depend on, on the data platform that the data ops uh, team um, creates. So all of like the work of the data ops team that should be like creating and maintaining those data models are always and should be always linked to the strategic goals of, of the company, no? And that's how at least like in the end you, you prioritize the work and you know uh, what, what you should be doing at, at, at every time, no? Um, so between this uh, technology and, 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 and processes and the problems and the people and processes that, that we will show us later, it's like the modern data stack. That is like my main point of, of, of the talk, which has all of the tools uh, and, and I'm gonna put as an example, like what we are we using in Solo Learn um, to, to solve all of the issues that, that we saw uh, in the previous slides. Um, so what is the modern data stack? In the end, it's like an, a new approach to data integration, which is essentially a set of tools that saves engineering time by automating processes and, and not, yeah, saving engineering time, allowing data engineers and analysts to pursue higher value activities for the business rather than be focusing on like more like tech problems or infrastructure problems that in the end is different, difficult to l connect to the um, business goals that we were seeing in the, in the previous slides. There are three main verticals on, and tools when, when we're talking about the modern data stack. Uh, well, there can be more, but it can be summarized in these three. Um, the first one is data extraction and, 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 and loading. For that, you have like kind of two different approaches that can, you can choose one or another one or, or, or combine them. Actually, that combination is what we are doing in, in, in Solo Learn. First is like tools, third party tools that they have pre-built connectors to like the different data sources. And this is very recommended when there's like a few people and it's difficult sometimes to hire data engineers and, and you don't have like that many resources to, to serve like all of the goals of the company. And those tools are like fully managed by the third party tool. And you just need to like worry about like, what are the source data that you need to connect and put it in the, in the data warehouse and, and transform them accordingly. And then you can also develop all of these connectors in house, which um, normally has the advantage that it's less costly because you don't need to pay like a third party tool for doing that, uh, but you also need to maintain it and that it's also something that you need to, in the end, get a, get a balance. No? Um, then the second part is, well, now I'm gonna talk about the, the data warehouse uh, before talking to the transformation. But like before, like some years ago, the tendency was to do ETL, which is extract, transform the data on the go, and then loading it into the DB or into the data warehouse and then using it. But with the evolution of the data warehouse or Delta Lakes, I saw that there was a talk about that uh, today, uh, that the computing power that they offer right now is amazing and then you are able to query 
tables with billions of rows in seconds, the tendency has shifted more into a ELT approach. No? You extract the data, you load it into the data warehouse or to the data lake, and then once you have the raw data, you transform it to adapt it to your, to your business needs. Um, so yeah, the, the cloud computing and warehouse, um, which is essentially a database, but the main difference is that the, the way that they store the data is columnar, so that allows for queries to be more optimized and, and, and more fast. And it's where we dump the, the, the raw data from, from the extract and load processes. And then uh, the data transformation uh, part, um, which it normally made with, with a tool that, or with SQL modeling or even PySpark or Python, depends on what you use. But the, the key here is that there should be a tool that allows you for version control, for documentation, and that it's very easy to go backwards and know what, what is happening with the data. No? Uh, if you don't take care of that and you don't use the appropriate tools and, and this approach, in the end, you will have like a lot of stored procedures uh, and you will not know who has made changes to those stored procedures or, and it's very difficult also to, like, to read the dependencies across all of the data models that, 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 that you build. And this is the example of the tooling that, that we use in SoloLearn. Like, I mean, uh, you, there's so, like, the important is not the names, like, these are like, a few examples, uh, but there are like, other tools in the market that they are similar to these ones. Um, but yes, for us in SolarN, for the ETL tools, what we use is a Fivetran, a combination between Fivetran and Databricks. Fivetran will be the, this third-party tool that has pre-built connectors, and for us, it's just as it's just, we need to integrate the data from Google Ads or Facebook Ads or paid media, so getting into our account there and dumping all of the data into the data warehouse and then figuring out how to transform it. Or we also use Databricks for other connectors uh, that Fivetran doesn't have in their, in their assortment. Uh, and there in Databricks, we build everything by our own code uh, and like, yeah, so with the, our data engineering uh, in-house effort. Then for data modeling and transformation, we use a, a tool that has become very, very famous and very used in the last uh, few years by a lot of the tech and startup companies, which is a DBT, that is Data Build Tool. Essentially, it's a, a platform where you can put all of your SQL code and also combine it like similar with Python with a language called Jinja to make the code more usable and, and readable. And this is a, um, uh, yeah, a tool that keeps the version control of all of the SQL transformations that, do you, that you do inside the data warehouse, allows also for monitoring, alerting, and, and, and documentation of, of what you got. This is kind of like the central piece of our, what we call now and data stack. For data warehouse and data lake, we use the Google Cloud Platform option, but there is, you can also use the Amazon one with Redshift or Azure, there's Snowflake, which is a, a agnostic in the, in the cloud provider. Um, in, in, in our case, we use BigQuery because um, it is serverless and we do not, don't need to worry about the configuration of the servers for doing all of like the, the queries and makes things mu much more easier for, for us in, in the point where we are. Then the business intelligence tool for doing all of the reporting. In our case, we use Power BI. There's a lot of options there in the market, like Tableau, um, Looker, uh, whatever you want to use there. Then for, uh, well, I, I forgot to mention that in the extract transformation and load, uh, there's the combination of doing in a batch way, which is just doing extract and transformation of the data once, twice a, a day, uh, but not keeping it like in real time in the data warehouse. But if there is a need to have the data in real time in the data warehouse, that's also possible with the streaming ETLs. In our case, uh, we use Kafka. Uh, we, we don't use Kafka in-house, we use Confluent Cloud, which is kind of ca Kafka managed, uh, but it's, it's the solution that we're using for, for having this uh, streaming data in, in real time in, in, in the data warehouse. And then a data workspace collaboration for the data science team to uh, connect to the data that is 
uh, transform and build as golden products and, and report layers in, in the data warehouse. And this allows them to just query the data and build the machine learning models or more complex analysis for A-B testing experimentation uh, with Python, with PySpark, with, with the language that they, that they want. Um, but yeah, in the end it's different kind of toolings that automate part of the process that they don't make us like build everything in house with the time and uh, effort and cost that, that will uh, entail and that make us like made us create a data platform in less than six months uh, that is useful for, for also for the data science team to focus on on developing all of their, their insights. This is kind of an overview, more visual on one of the, the tooling that that we use. So we have here like the the, the data data sources that normally comes up from the client side, which is the apps, Android, iOS, web, and the, the backend. Uh, then also we have like all of the third tools uh, that con we connect them through their APIs, and that they also provide like data that is not. Um, like in-house, it's not data that we create, that they create, but that is also really important for us in case of like Facebook ads, Google ads, like how much we are spending in marketing, Iterable, which is the tool that we use for communicating with the users and make them make, um, send them push notifications, or Apps Flyer, that it's the tool that connects what our user does with the app with all of the marketing campaigns that we are running, no? like saying this user has done this inside the app, because of this campaign that you've run, no? and it has like a lot of data that is very important for for us and for the product teams to to analyze. Um, some of like the backend data and the client side data goes to uh, streaming to the different Kafka topics, and then going to the to the data warehouse with with a connector. And some of this data of uh, the SQL Server and and the applications that the, if there is no need for going in the streaming. They go on batches uh, with the Databricks or, or with Fivetran, uh, depending if Fivetran has the pre-built connector or not, or we do a balance of like what is the effort and cost for each connector, and then um, everything goes to, to the data warehouse, and in, th in there we have like three, three levels. Uh, we have bronze, silver, and, and golden layer. The bro bronze layer is the raw data, so it's data that goes from the source to the data warehouse, and we do the really basic transformation to make sure that the table of schema, it, it, it doesn't change, it is the same. But then we have, it's where DVT enters in place. It has, it's connected to, to GitHub in our case for, for version control. Um, then we build the silver layer, which is also the other name that we use is staging which is kind of a one-to-one -one relation between the raw table and the silver table. And here we make sure that strings are strings, integers are integers, like the basic transformations, or if we receive a JSON or a payload in the raw data, we unnest it uh, and we create like the table structure that, 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 that we want and with the naming that we are comfortable with. And then we build the golden layer with doing all of like merge or joins between the silver data that we know is with the with the structure that 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 we want, and this fact and and dim tables is the the one that confirm the, the golden layer, uh, the well, difference of factual and, and and dimensional tables. Factual is just something that happened in the past and you cannot change it retroactively in the sense like for example a user has completed a lesson in, in the app. No? This is something that happened, it's a fact, and each row represents that, that event. And dimensional tables are giving extra information uh, to, to the factual uh, variables, and those dimensional tables can change uh, with time. For, for instance, information about each user ID, how many lessons they've completed in the last 30 days. Like This is some variables that are updating all of the time. And and then we have a, a, la, the, the, our last uh, layer, which is called the reporting layer, that it's a, once we have like all of the factual and dimensional models, you create aggregated reports uh, in order to make the, the data visualization tool that we use more efficient and, and optimal. 
Uh, but the key thing here is that, yeah, all of these transformations happen uh, within inside the data warehouse uh, using the computational power. So it, it, it is very fast and not and and uh, and not very expensive. And everything happen, happens in a collaborative environment between like all of the data engineers and analytics engineers using using GitHub. So in the end, what we know is that all of the factual and reporting layers are tested or monitored because you can also set up moni monitoring and testing alerts within a DBT. They have like pre-built like to test if that they are not null values, that all of the values of a column are unique or the count of a specific variable. It's the same of the count of that same variable in other models. You can be a very creative in the way of you, how you test and monitor the data. Uh, and then the data science team, they, don't, they need like kind of forget about doing all of this and just focusing on using our visualization tools and, and analysis tools to, to, to create and, and gather the insights for, for the product teams. Uh, of course, that's kind of an ideal world. Uh, there's always like collaboration between, in between the, the, two, the two teams, especially because yeah, we really need to align on what do we build in these in this kind of models. Um, but yes, this is our, how our current data platform looks. Uh, and in the future, we might also incorporate any uh, uh, other things that they can also like be integrated in, inside like the modern data stack, especially like two, two important kind of tools, the reverse ETL and like ML platform or MLOps platform. Um, Reverse CTLs are some tools, like these are some of the examples, like Census, High Touch, like, like there are a lot of them. But what essentially what this reverse tools, ETL tool does, it is querying the data from the data warehouse and putting it back in some of the tools that we use to make the, the process more uh, data driven. So let's say we want to communicate with all of the users that has completed a lesson in the last uh, two days on that specific lesson. As we are doing all of the transformations here, that aggregated data is in our data warehouse, it's not in our, in our main uh, database. So with these kind of tools, you can connect the warehouse to uh, these tools and make data-driven decisions. This is not something that we have right now, but it is also an approach that a lot of companies are, are using. Uh, and then the ML platform with the a normal ML cycle. Uh, for that, we will probably use uh, Databricks. But the important thing is that the ML platform is connected to all of the golden models and reporting models that the data ops team creates. So, and then like when, once you have the, the, the model built, you can use it to, in, again, like to create more data-driven decisions there. Um, okay. Uh, now talking about more uh, uh, the different like people and, and processes aspects like when what's the problem when you have like a data science team or a data analyst team but you have not built uh, a, a data ops or a team that is just focused on that um, like three uh, there are three things that we need to talk about no? first of all like the workflow uh, like defining who does what and what are the like the the different roles uh, inside inside the team this is crucial, if not it creates like the misalignments and, and problems, then well, focus also like in the transition. Um, as normally like the data, the, the, the data teams like first hires have built all of like the knowledge around the, the, um, the, the tables and the, 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 the data models that, 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 the, that the company is using and like how, how do we shift to the new new place, no? when there are like two separate teams and one is dedicated fully to this and the other one uh, it's not. And also create an, an appropriate resource plan, like if there's less than you to hire someone new, um, who, like I said, what role is responsible for what, uh, what the technology do we need and, and invest on, on it. Uh, in that aspect, like, I guess like, it's really important to uh, differentiate like what are the different roles and responsibilities that a data ops team should do. Um, like the th there can be more, but the three, um, the three most Im Im uh, important ones are to differentiate what's data engineer, analytics engineering, and MLOps uh, engineers. Um, for data engineer, 
the key focus area is to operate and optimize the data warehouse and, and, and data lake. And their focus is more about this first, like the, when, they, when we were seeing like all of the um, schema of, of the data platform, the left side, no? Like how do we ingest the raw data? How do we create this bronze layer in the data warehouse? And also uh, making sure that the staking layer, like the bronze to silver, follows, follows the, the principles and the standards for, 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 the, for, for the company. Uh, they build all of the data integrations, manage the pipeline orchestration, and they are responsible for managing day-to-day -day pipeline processes and resolving abstract, upstream issues as needed. Also, they decide uh, if we're gonna use a stream, but like what is the most efficient way to get data into the warehouse. Then analytics engineers, they focus more on transforming the silver da data into gold uh, products and the, and the reporting, and reporting layers to standardize KPI measurement. They uh, provide consultative support and stewardship on how to access data, as well as governance and overall data architecture. Like they also responsible to, they are responsible of the whole data model of the data warehouse and doing all of the documentation and knowing what, what's going on and doing the transformations on the most optimal way and being in contact with the data analysts and the product teams in order to, to deliver that. And then the MLOps engineer part that will still current on having the, or not doing so in, in SolarEarn, but that can, for an advanced data ops team, it's an important role that is to maintain and operate the, the ML platform and infrastructure, the development and deployment cycles of machine learning models. Like once the model it works with happy with a model, like provide the infrastructure to train them, to put it into production, how the engineers are going to connect to that uh, ML ops to serve all of the, all of the predictions. And final, well, there are two different processes uh, that are important and how data ops engage with, with them. First one is like kind of a standard business engagement. There's like a need, like there's a need to change a dashboard, to add a new variable. That team uh, like has an analytical question to solve. If this can solve by the data science team, data analytics team embedded in the product teams, uh, then they use those products that are already built and everything goes as normal. If not, then it's where the data ops team uh, enters in the equation. The manager uh, should pro uh, facilitate the intake process and discovery to understand what is the, the impact of, of, of that need and prioritize it accordingly. Then create the product requirements with the product teams and finally execute on a sprint planner or Kanban approach, it depends on the company. And the other one is when there's like a new product feature and there's uh, something new, like it's not something like an improvement on something existing, like then the, everything starts from the uh, product requirements document, the PRD, the, um, the, the data analyst along with the product manager, they define what are the requirements, the analytics re requirements for that new product feature, and then the data ops uh, team, they facilitate and discovery of, of and to understand what are the, the implications of that PRD. If that means that we need to create new data or it will create some changes in the existing data, then we go to like this flow of doing all of the data engineering and analytics engineering work in able to finally have like the DVD reporting layer, all of the models there. So once the product feature it is released, the data team has and the analytics team has all of the models uh, already there. And if not, then continue as, as normal with the product development without implications of the, of the data of Steam. Uh, yeah, this was the last slide. Uh, it was a lot of information, but uh, thank you. And if, yeah, if you have any question, please. Uh, time for questions. Thank you for the talk. It was very good. I have a question regarding the architecture that you have shared. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that for uh, data processing, you are using Databricks. And for data lake and data warehouse capabilities, you have, uh, uh, I believe, uh, maybe I mentioned, uh, maybe I'm missing BigQuery, right? Yes, like, yeah, we, we, we choose the, those stack. Um, we use Databricks mainly now for data engineering purposes. Like, we have the code, the code builder for 
uh, connecting to our SQL Server and then putting the data in, into BigQuery. Yeah, we don't use Databricks for data transformations, mm -hmm. which could be another option, and this is something that uh, we investigated using Delta, the Delta Lake of Databricks. And you can also connect DBT mm -hmm. to, to there. It's yeah. also a really good solution, but we decided to go to with BigQuery. Um, have you considered Dataproc other than Databricks for uh, pipeline development? Yeah, that was another option to use uh, the Google Cloud Platform tools for for like using also like the data proc that it's like similar. Uh, yeah, I mean we considered, but in the end uh, we we liked like the UI of Databricks, how it worked with the proof of concept. We were happy with it, uh, but of mm -hmm. course there's, you can also use all of the GCP tools for for mm -hmm. doing that. Like there's. Yeah, I see. And the last question. Um, Maybe I missed it. Uh, do you have uh, data quality checks on your pipelines? Yes, like that happens uh, in DBT. Uh -huh. So nice. DBT has pre-built a test for, for checking the data quality. Normally, like we do uh, most of the our checks in in this phase, like when, oops, when well, when moving from raw data to, to silver layer, uh -huh. it's where we do most of our Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, everyone. Oh, okay. And thank you for your talk. Um, you mentioned that you use DBT for version control, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. I see Git too. Like, uh, how much? version control provides dbt if you are additionally using git too well the version control is provided by by github which is connected now in the, in the end dbt is kind of a like repository of sql code it has can has like a lot of, a lot of things like macros or pre-built packages but when i say version control is that every sql query that we do and when we want to do a change in any of the data model that is reflected in github and we have like a pull request process, so I cannot just go there and change something and no one could see what, what is being changed. No? It is someone from the team needs to review it, understand the implications. Also, when we do a pull request, there is an automatically, uh, there's an automatic trigger that um, the, um, builds all of the models in a development branch and see that there are no like uh, conflicts so when we merge new code, we know that we are not affecting and breaking anything on the go, uh, which is very important because we are now maintaining more than 300 data models in a data warehouse. So once, especially when you are doing changes in the first part of the pipeline, you can think that that will not break anything, but it can. So it's good that GitHub allows us to, to do that trigger of also like running all of the tests in the model to make sure that we are not creating duplicates, that all of those things. Thank you. So how do you orchestrate your work in the pipeline? Because I see that the data is first party tools. Uh, yeah, you have a partner from one of Yeah. Yes. Currently, what we do is we have like two different process, like for the, well, the streaming goes in real time, all of the time. Then, Databricks and five, uh, five they happen like once a day. It's like a the batch process. It's like very early in the morning, and then uh, we have the all of the DVT orchestration that is triggered uh, half an hour after the batch process. It is uh, yeah. currently it's not automatic that trigger. You, we could automate it with Airflow, for instance. That that would be possible. But currently we know what is the time that we update like all of the data models and we put like half an hour to orchestrate all of the models in DVT. But with DVT, it's very easy to say, okay, run the, these models or just specifically these models. And the cool thing about DVT is like, it automatically reads the dependencies. So you don't need to think about that. Like it knows that this table is built from this table. So it knows that this table needs to be built before and they, it doesn't allow for cyclic dependencies. So if if you create a cyclic dependency, 
it will give an error and it will tell you. Yeah, it can happen. And if you are running BBC as on schedule, it don't know that error happens. Like they cannot check it, but two separate runs of Fivetran. Yeah, it's true. Fivetran and DBT has a connection. So you can connect Fivetran with DBT, and that will be connected. But in our case, I don't know, we, we have it separately. But yeah, I agree that that's, that's a risk. Maybe three days can be better because yeah, then it's done. Then it's we also have, in DBT, we have a source alerts. Like we have alerts on the source. And every time the, the pipeline runs, it checks if the data has been updated. And if it's not been updated, it gives you an error. So before starting the pipeline, we know that the data is updated. You know. That's how we connect both points. Thank you.